good afternoon everyone he's handed over the baton to me at 1201 so good afternoon it is my absolute honor and privilege to be speaking at this uh, sustainability summit uh, and to this esteemed gathering today uh, we've done an introduction brief introduction about the company so let me just do a brief introduction about myself i'm shashank sharma i'm the founder chairman and ceo of sansha energy uh, company that we are building brick by brick with a belief that one day uh, we will be the most valuable and the largest energy company in the country uh, currently we are in the first leg of our uh, energy journey which is centered around industrial decarbonization and as you saw we are uh, we are backed by partners group with a 400 million dollar equity investment uh, uh, to take this mission forward hey, do you have a this is okay so let's just come back to the topic uh, of the talk our vision for uh, an energy independent india so let me let me just show you a picture and i just want all of you to look at this take 5 seconds and just write down whatever comes to your mind first whatever comes to your mind first whoever whoever wants to go first energy consumption, energy consumption. anyone else development development waste, waste. yeah correct correct you know for us at sancho when we look at this picture we imagine the india of 2035 right that is how india is going to be that is how our mega cities are going to be and you know our nation in 2035 is going to be a global superpower the third largest economy in the world by a considerable margin will be will be a trend 10 trillion dollar economy then right and we'll have the largest work workforce will not only be the office of the world will also be the factory of the world right so it will be a it will be a very different india that we see today right uh, and 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 the euphoria around india is so intense you know it's so intense these days that and i was going through a report uh, by morgan stanley uh, which said titled why this is india's decade right the report said the world is rallying behind india rallying behind india to lead the global growth india is going to be the fastest growing economy for the next decade will add 20% of the world's gdp over the next decade in a world which is which is starved starved of growth right and if you look at if you look at the mnc indicator of morgan stanley which basically reads the the reports of all these multinational companies and funds they are talking about india uh, india very heavily right and and it just suggests that the in, the india sentiment is a is at a all time high right but the question is how do we build it right uh, how do we build it the transition from where we stand today the transition from where we stand today to this right is not going to be easy india has to succeed in its development path right if it has to be a global superpower and if being the operative word here right if being the operative word and you know if india reaches here it will be a unique unique country being a democracy to attain this in such a short span of short span it will be a unique country right and among lot of other things that india has to do to reach uh, reach where we have to reach we have to we have to do lot of stuff building physical infrastructure building roads ports airports power plants mega cities a lot of it has to be done in fact it is said that 70% of the infra uh, india's infrastructure in 2030 has not been built so far right so what we are what we are essentially saying is we will build more infrastructure in the next 7 years than we have done in the last 75 years right that's a lot of infrastructure to be built right along with this we'll be we'll be building social infrastructure which of course we you know so schools hospitals colleges digital infrastructure 
but you know everything you know everything and and of course uh, the the before the first uh, session that we had is around building mega cities big cities sustainable cities industrial hubs there will be a lot of investments which will come in india teslas apples foxconns it will be a different place you know but none of none of this none of what i just spoke about is going to be possible without energy right energy is key to economic development it is the backbone of our economy and very very fundamental to us becoming a global superpower right and you know it wouldn't be incorrect to say that when when we talk about an atmanirbhar bharat it wouldn't be incorrect to say that without energy independence there will be no atmanirbhar bharat right so so it's it's that importance and that is the cause that is that is one cause that drives all of us at sunshore each day to come to work and 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 take india forward which is how do we make an india energy independent right and you know just to just to uh, give people in the room an idea of how important this is let me just jog your memory to the 1980s right uh, 1980s we, we all know that india wasn't doing well economically we had a balance of payments crisis and it, you know the economy was not so liberalized and then you know an uh, Iraq decided to in, invade Kuwait in in 90s and we had the gulf war oil prices suddenly went up and we did not have money to pay our import bills right we couldn't import oil and india would have come to a standstill if imf would not have helped us and uh, you know we had to go to imf and if i i hate to say this with a with a bowl in our hand to help us in that situation and to us uh it is the biggest scar on our soul in the last 75 years having to go to a to an institution begging for help right and and that is why we need to make uh india energy independent which is not dependent on vagaries of the world and can power its growth on its own right but what exactly you know what exactly is the is the idea of energy independence we all know that every country has its own story right every country has its own story on development uh, the western development model has been very different it did not care about the generations to come it did not care about about the future too much it was built on the back of oil and gas now india's story is different right and the underlying assumption here the underlying assumption that that we have here is that unlike the western world uh where the consumption has sort of flattened out the energy consumption is not going to rise too much india has a very different story for next 3 decades our energy consumption is going to rise massively right so our story has to be very different our story we has to be a we have to cater to this demand and it has to be sustainable so when we talk about energy independence uh, there are four broad themes that that we believe at sunshore are very important uh which is one, the first being energy access which is about making energy available to people uh, and it's a sign of prosperity the second being the energy transition and decarbonization uh, in we are a signatory to the paris accord and have certain targets uh, set up for uh, set for us uh, third being sustainable development not committing the mistakes that people have in the past and you know there is sometimes there's this thing called the last mover advantage which we have right whatever mistakes that that the west has done we don't we don't have to repeat them and we have to build build develop sustainably and fourth one being cost effective technology adoption manufacturing uh, there is there is a certain level of manufacturing that we have to do in india to be really energy independent I, i'm going to speak about it and these are these these are all intertwined themes you cannot uh, differentiate or you cannot look at them separately so so let me let me just uh, let me just as i said the assumption is that unlike the west our consumption is going to increase year on year year on year for for the next 2 3 decades right and just to give you a sense of where we stand today the average indian uh, today consumes about 800 watts of energy and i'm not consume uh, not uh, including food here because food is separate so average indian consumes about 800 watts of energy it includes 
whatever air conditioning, commute, everything that we do, right? Just to give you an extent of the, the, uh, how low it is, the average American consumes 9,000 watts of energy in a day, right? Again, I'm excluding food from here. So there is, there is a lot of headroom. There's a lot of headroom. And, and the reason why we were at such low levels is that we did not have energy access in the past, right? And in the last few years, what we have essentially done is we have connected more than six lakh villages, right? And more cities to the grid, right? And it's a virtuous cycle. When you give people energy access, it increases consumption. It increases consumption. It leads to more growth, and it's a virtuous cycle, right? And and that's what is happening in India today, right? And uh, so so that that's what is happening. And w what we believe is, by conservative estimates, the per capita consumption in India is going to increase by 60 percent over the next 10 years, and our overall energy demand will increase by about two, two three times. And the, this 60% this increase in per capita consumption is going to be, two thirds of this is going, to be, uh, is going to be powered by renewable energy that we set up. Now, just to, just, so this is about energy access, but the sec now the second theme around energy transition and decarbonization, India is a signatory to the Paris Accord, right? And has certain COP26 targets and commitments. We import oil, and oil and oil equivalents worth $140 billion every year, right? $140 billion, it's a, it's a drain on our forex reserve. Since our energy requirements are growing, and you know, this is, this is something that is very different from what the Western world is going to do. So now Western world's energy requirements are being catered by the plants that they set up previously, which are traditional plants fired by coal, oil, coal um, and oil. Now, so, so in India what's happening is, when our energy requirement is increasing, what we really need to do is we need to add more of renewable energy rather than destroy our coal plants, right? So our transition that we're talking about is going to be a lot less disruptive than the, than the rest of the world, where they'll have to shut down plants and replace it by renewable energy plants. So, so our transition is, is sort of very, very different. And India intends to add 500 gigawatts of RE capacity by 2030. And, and when we get there, it will change our external dynamics and reduce our oil dependency and, in, and reduce oil inflation volatility. You know, there's one thing uh, that, that we need that is very unique about India. While energy, energy transitions have taken place in a lot of countries, right? But India is the only country where energy access and energy transition are happening parallelly at this scale. There is no parallel to this in the, in the entire world, right? So it is important that while we are making this transition, we do it in a sustainable manner, right? And, uh, and also, also include our underserved people in the country. Now, when you look at stats and, uh, you know, when, we, when, when I interview people who are not from Delhi, and ask them to shift to Delhi. The, the first question that they ask is, uh, my parents are telling me, would you be able to live there? Right. It's a very, very strange narrative to have for your capital city, by the way. Right? Delhi is our capital city, and if that's the perception that Indians have. Uh, what is the perception that the world has about us? Uh, you can, we can just imagine, right? But the hard fact and the hard reality is we are home to 39 of the 50 most polluted cities in the world, right? And in Delhi, residents lose nine years of their life expectancy every year because of this pollution, right? So this energy transition that we, I just spoke about, that has to be, has to be a reality in, 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 the, in, in India's energy independence, right? And you know, while we have achieved 100% rural electrification, I don't think we are supplying power to our, our villages enough, right? The schools, uh, villages are, are not being catered to, and 90% of the power is being used by the mega cities, industries, and the transport hubs that we have, right? And we are, we are leaving them behind. And, and there is a very interesting thing that we, that we have at Sunshaw. Uh, 
when we say we are responsible for people's dreams, right? We are responsible for people's dreams. So what we what we actually do is we set up large scale renewable energy plants for large corporates, right? And we do th we set up those plants in far flung areas of UP, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, you know, places like Banda Balia, where where people where kids, you know, some of the kids can't even afford uh, a pair of clothes in winters, right? Those those are that poor. Uh, and it's it's a humbling experience whenever whenever we go there, right? So although these plants are set up there, the power that we sell to our customers is actually an accounting exercise. The power is actually being used in those places, right? It's not actually that the power is being transmitted to transmitted to these these large corporates that we sign up for, and that you know that is increasing the energy access of these underserved uh, underserved masses and that's why the the decentralized and democratization of the power sector in india is extremely important uh, last but not the least is the low cost technology we are we are extremely dependent on the external world for the equipments and technology that we are using today right uh, the we read in the headlines, we read in the newspapers that India's uh, tariffs have gone down, India's renewable energy tariffs have gone down, and probably we are the cheapest solar power energy uh, producer in the world. You know, but, some, but I don't think anyone feels satisfied when we, when we, you know, sort of evaluate the situation that all all this all these modules and all this technology is coming from china right and we are we cannot be we cannot be energy independent till the time we we start producing uh, and, and and this technology here <clears throat> so i just want to end uh, end this energy independence talk by saying that that we are in a seminal decade and energy and infrastructure as a theme is at a different level in India right now. The rise in energy consumption alongside the energy transition also opens up a new segment to boost investment growth. This rise in capital investments will help unleash a virtuous cycle of investment with more jobs and income and more savings in turn, more investment. Companies like us uh, have been beneficiaries of this at a lot of levels. Uh, just to give you an idea about uh, about Sunshaw, we are actually the youngest company uh, in the energy sector in the country with an average age of le less than average age of less than 35 to have raised this sort of capital, which is which is 400 million dollars uh, fr from a private equity, right? And this 400 million dollars that we've raised is just the start. Uh, there is there is a 70 750 billion. We believe that there is more 750 billion dollar to trillion dollar investment that is going to come. Uh, come in the country and if we continue to work in this sector for the next 15 to 20 years with this passion, we'll actually create the largest uh, largest energy company in the country. You know, our, our Prime Minister has said that we have to become energy independent by 2047, right? that, which is the 100th year of independence and hopefully we all will do our bit uh, to make India energy independent. Thank you and Jayanth.